Hey there, boaters. I'm Captain Stacy Hanrahan, and welcome to Monday's episode of Boaters TV. First up, our captain's caption photo was provided by Eric Lindstrom. We'll reveal the caption of the day at the end of the show. Now in ship shape, Southern Boating's Captain Rob Hanrahan is here with the end of Analog. Hey there, Captain Stacy. Unless you're hooked up to cable at the dock or have a fancy satellite dish up on the hardtop, it's tough to get a clear television picture on board. But change is on the way, and Southern Boating contributing editor Chuck Husick says we should all be thanking the end of Analog. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past few months, you've definitely heard the TV stations harping about the big change coming to U.S. television February 17, 2009. That's when TV stations will stop broadcasting in analog and start transmitting the digital signals. Now, since there's not enough time to get real technical here, the changeover to digital basically means that you're going to see a clearer, sharper picture with great audio and no more snow. Boaters who rely on over-the-air signals to watch TV will see the difference immediately. Chuck found the digital signal tunes in superior images when compared to the same analog channel, sometimes picking up stations that were snowy or totally missing. With digital, you won't have to choose between watching the Sunday game or being out on the boat. All you need is a digital analog converter. That's a small box that connects between your existing antenna and your TV. Most sell for around $65, and you can even get a coupon from the government to help you pay for it. Installation is a cinch. The box hooks up just like your cable TV box at home. That's it. Sit back and enjoy your favorite shows. Now we just have to get the Boaters TV syndicated so you can watch this show while you're out on the water. To hear about Chuck's viewing experience, read his entire article in our September issue or register for our virtual magazine at www.southernboating.com. Captain Stacy, back to you. Thanks, Rob. Next, we'll see what's splashing around in nautical news. While most of the Olympic media attention focused on Michael Phelps turning the water he swam in to gold, here at the Boaters TV, we were keeping a close eye on the waters of the Yellow Sea. Nineteen different countries won at least one medal in the sailing games. But no one came close to Great Britain, who took home six medals, Four gold, a silver, and a bronze. As expected, Britain's three blondes in a boat, Sarah Ayton, Pippa Wilson, and Sarah Webb, took the England class gold. And the country's biggest sailing star, Ben Ainsley, took his third straight Olympic gold. The proudest sailing moment for Americans was when Anna Tunnicliffe won the first gold medal for a U.S. female sailor in 20 years and InGin won China their first ever Olympic sailing gold by competing in the women's RSX windsurfers. But perhaps the most spectacular story of the sailing games came out of the 49er skiff race. When the Danish overall leaders broke their boat's mast, the Croatians, with an act that showed the true spirit of the Olympic games, lent them their skiff. The Danes went on to win the gold with that borrowed boat. And in case you're wondering what happened to all that algae that covered the Yellow Sea just one month prior to the Games, well, thousands of Chinese officials and volunteers removed more than a million tons of the green growth only to turn it into an Olympic souvenir. Keychains with strands of seaweed preserved in plastic. <laughs> Next up in Just for the Hall of It, a cruise ship for land lovers. So you're looking to take a vacation. You like the grand accommodations and cuisine of a cruise ship, but know you're a true landlubber. You want the nautical feel without the seasickness. Well, where do you go? How about the Queen Elizabeth Elite? It's a hotel and spa that appears to be sailing the seas, but is firmly attached to land in Turkey. This five-star hotel sits between the Tauros Mountains and the Mediterranean Sea. The hotel's layout has been designed to resemble a harbor with ships. The largest ship is the main hotel, and the smaller ships are villas. Nautical decor is everywhere you look, from the guest suites to the restaurants. 
This static cruise ship has all the amenities of its floating cousins, like all-inclusive dining, indoor and outdoor pools, and even an amusement park. Just like any good cruise ship, the Queen Elizabeth Elite has a fully equipped fitness and spa center, including Turkish baths, saunas, and a shock pool. So if you like the idea of a cruise ship, but not the idea of being at sea, check out the Queen Elizabeth Elite at www.queenelizabeth.com.tr. And now it's time to announce this week's poll. Here we go. I usually boat with my friends, my spouse, my co-workers, the whole gang, nobody. To vote, simply go to www.theboaters.com. And finally today, the captain's caption of the day is, you're gonna need a bigger boat. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Submitted by Scott. <laughs> And that'll do it for this episode of The Boaters TV. See you back here on Wednesday.